Hey, what's going on everybody? We are back in the garage and we are here to wrap up this shop series. Uh, in the last video, you could see we got this garage cleaned up nice and it's ready to set up for my shop. Uh, I've been reading a lot of the comments. I got some great feedback from everybody, great ideas on things I need. And uh, so I think I got an idea of, of how I'm gonna set it up. So I think the only thing to do is to get at it. So let's do it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up these workbenches, this folding DeWalt uh, workbenches. Again, always thank you to DeWalt. They are so good to me uh, with hooking me up with tools and things I need for the shop. So I couldn't be happier with our partnership. So again, DeWalt, thank you very much. But yeah, I think I'll set these things up so that way I have at least some workspace uh, to do some other things. So uh, let's break open this box and see what we got going on. It's gonna be great for the shop. Just something to work on. I showed you in the last video that rickety rackety thing I had for a bench or for a workbench. <laughs> it is ridiculous. So these are nice. Um, I can keep them up if I need to. I might even put the planer on one of these. I think I'm going to grab a planer um, so I could put that on here and have it set up all the time. If not, they fold up super easy, stick against the wall, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So again, DeWalt, thank you so much for uh, the tables. And uh, let's see what's next on the agenda. I need to get rid of all this material over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some shelves. I just put some brackets, and I'm going to build some shelves up here to get all that material out of the way, off the ground, and up here. And then we'll focus on getting this shelf built. All right, so there's my piece. It's gonna be simple. So I made this one a foot, and I made these 10 and a half so that with the inch and a half here, it's the same foot by a foot. And that's just gonna go up against the wall, boop, and material on it. But I do need some support in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my square, I'm just gonna stick my square in here. And now once I know that I got a 90 in its square, I'll just measure this length of my square. So I'm at 10 and a quarter. So that's gonna be Short point to short point of a 45, 10 and a quarter, that should give me a piece to stick in there. So that's my 45 that way, so I'll just zip this off. Okay. And then it is kind of hard doing it from a short point. What I like to do, this is a little pro tip, is you can take your material and line up your short point with like your fence here or your back whatever you call that thing and that way i have something to hook on and then i'll just hook on that and i'll go ten and a quarter off of there which is there i am going to draw a square line there just because i can see it better like that and then i need that to be the short point as well so what I'll do is I like to go like this and just kind of fold it in there so I know that's short point. So now I'll just spin this around this way. That looks pretty stout to me. What do you think? All right, do that a couple more times. We're goldy. Perfect. Hey, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to now get a number of my long points because that's going to be easier to cut. So 13 and an eighth.
And I also have these big timber locks that I bought for outside. I think I'm gonna use these to attach it. They're six inch, so if I go something like that, through this one, through that one, and into the stud, that will super hold it, and then I'll just throw a couple nails or screws in the side there. All right, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and go get some screws. I just, I can't, I don't wanna nail these up just in case if I have to move them or if they're not in the right spot, it's just gonna be a nightmare. So I don't have any screws. I need to go get some screws. And I told myself yesterday, we were at Ben's working and I uh, said, man, I need to make sure I <laughs> put my pouch full of screws. And of course I did not. So let me run down to Oxford, my local hardware store there and uh, get some screws. All right, let's go. So some of you might have saw the Instagram post I put out a few weeks ago, kind of making fun of my hair. But I'll tell you, male pattern baldness is legit and it affects men everywhere. But boys, I got good news for you. Hair loss stops with Keeps. So Keeps is an online subscription service that makes it easy and convenient and more affordable for men to treat male pattern baldness from the comfort of their own home. Keeps is super easy. Just simply fill out an online consultation and a licensed medical provider then will take your information and they will tailor a treatment plan that addresses the needs that you're looking for for your hair loss. And voila, the treatment shows up right at your door. You didn't even have to go to the pharmacy. And you can set yourself up on shipment plans. You can do a three, six, or 12 month plan, whatever works best for you. And these treatment plans are super affordable. They're usually half the price of traditional pharmacy prices. Get this, Keeps has over 4,500 five-star reviews. And to date, Keeps has helped nearly 1 million men keep their hair. So whether you're looking to prevent hair loss or stimulate hair growth or just take better care of your hair, Keeps has you covered. So remember, men, hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash jaysway. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash jaysway to get started. Looking good. <laughs> As always, I'd like to thank Keeps for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to setting this shop up. All right, what's next? Lights. The lighting system in here sucks. As you can see, I got a couple of my, um, whatever they're called, but that I use for doing my ads to try to light this place up. So this is just a little before the hyper lights get put in. This is about what she looks like on a daily basis. Let's see if we can't change that. Okay, let's see what these are. The Honeycomb series. Hexagon LED lights. What? Oh my lord. Man. That's gonna be sweet. Oh, I guess I just go like this. Does that go in there? All right, so that just goes in there and then you plug it in. And then from here, you just take these LED, the little strips, they just go in here. There's a little tab that holds it. It just slides in and clicks. Boom. You can see from the time lapse, that was super easy to put together. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first opened the box, I was like, oh God, I gotta put it together. But it actually goes together super, super easy. It just, these clips just go together and that's it, man. It's super light, it's nice. They actually sent me some extra parts, which was cool. They sent me one of each extra part. I don't know if they do that for everybody or if it was just for me, knowing that I'd probably end up breaking some. But hey, I got it all together. And I love the fact of this is that it just plugs in. 
And that's great for me because I have outlets in the ceiling for the lights. So that's going to be perfect for me. So I have it all together. Let's just plug it in and see if it works. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Wow. Woo. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought, too. I didn't think it was going to be that big. That is freaking awesome. And that's balled down and it's lighting up good. So I can't wait to get on the ceiling. All right, so you can see from the time lapse, I've been having a little bit of a problem getting this thing in. And the reason being is it's kind of big and bulky for one person. If you had two people, one on each ladder, this thing would have been up so easy. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hold it up. You can see I had a piece of board. I'm trying to hold it up, kind of center it where I want, and screw it in all by myself. And I did it, but the problem was is that, see this one over here? It's on the freaking outlet that I can't have. And then this two by fours from the uh, door opener, we're sticking too far because I got to go over like maybe four or five inches or so. So I have one screw there holding it in and I have one screw here holding it in. So you can see these things are super light. Sometimes when you're by yourself, man, you got to come up with some ingenuity. Is I put a hook in right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that screw out and let this thing fall onto the hook, which will hold this end up. And then I'll come down here and I'll undo that one. And then I'll slide it over where it needs to be and then I'll put this screw back in. So I think where it's at is pretty good as far as centered in that section, which would be nice. So let me, uh, let me just slide it down this way a little bit and get it screwed back in. <laughs> I never been so excited about lights before. Things are freaking awesome. Look at the difference between that old nasty light and these LEDs. Gosh, it looks so good. Get a couple more in here. It's going to be nice. I'm never going to want to go inside. Steph's going to be like, Jason, where you at? I'm just going to be sitting out here drinking a beer or soda or something. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So Hyperlite also sent me three more of these capsule series ones, the same that I put in the shed. So I'm going to put one over the chop saw, I'm going to put one over the table saw, and then I'm going to put one over the workbench. I think those, with along with the honeycomb, I'll have this place lit up nice. I think that's a huge difference. It's sweet. I got all of them up. I got the capsule series lights. I got one here. It's going to be over the table saw. I got one here over the chop saw. I got one over here over kind of like my workbench and tools area. And then I got these sweet honeycomb ones just lighting up the main area there. Now, again, this side over here is not super bright, but it don't need to be. It's just our chairs and stuff like that. All the work's going to be going on over in this area, and it's super light. And I'm really, really digging it. So again, thanks to Hyperlight uh, for these sweet lights. Again, check the description below. You'll have a, I'll have a link in there uh, for these lights. And also for you guys, I will have a discount code in there as well. So I uh, appreciate it, Hyperlight. And uh, let's get back to doing some work. Next thing I'm going to work on is trying to figure out where this chop saw is going to go. This chop saw is going to go against this back wall. And there's going to be a shelf along this whole back wall. But I want to be able to put a full... 16 foot piece of material in there if I need to cut it you know I don't know I won't be able to cut it in the middle but if I need to cut the end off or do something there it is nice to be able to have a full piece of material so um, the shelves gonna come off here somehow and kind of curve this way I don't want it to come straight out so I'm gonna make it curve this way a little bit and then run sorry again I don't have the microphone I do apologize but it's gonna run the length of it down here so 
It doesn't have to go all the way to the end. I'm probably going to stop it somewhat here. But if I have a full piece of material, I can lay it on top of this bench and have it go this way. So as long as I can get it in before it hits the shelf area, I think I'll be all right. So I'm going to hook on this shelf and pull 16 foot, which brings me to this outlet. Now, I don't want to have this thing right in front of the outlet. So I'm just going to move it this way a little bit. So I think somewhere right in here would be good for the chop saw. So I got out the old Laz goo. This one here is just below that plate. And this one here is just above that plate. So I think if I use this reference line in the back, and then when I do my plywood here for the shelf, I'll just make sure it's flush. I'll just make sure it's flush here when I put the kicker on it. And again, I'll make sure that that one's flush there when I put the kicker on it. And I think that will be good. So I'm just going to use that. And I'm just going to put some 2x4 I got out there. Run a piece of 2x4 along the back there. Cut whatever width I want for my um, sheathing, for my shelf. I'm just going to use that old um, zip board I got over there and rip it down to whatever width I want. And then put the kickers on just like I did next door. And I so you have to love living rural. Uh, it was about right now when the goat showed up at the job site. Yes, my neighbor's goat came by and scared the crap out of me. So uh, Nana says he's super nice, but I don't know. He doesn't really like me much. He's always bucking at me like he wants to bite me or something. So... It was time for Pepe to go home. So it's getting late in the day and uh, I just took all this apart because I'm not an idiot, but I'm an idiot. So I put this at the same height as this. Anyone else that was watching the channel probably was screaming at the TV again because I have the thickness of my material shelf that needs to be in there as well. So when I put this on, this was way too freaking high. So it all needs to go down three quarters or whatever the width of this material is to make it the right height. Yeah, okay. Hey, you know what? Whatever. So I'll just take this off, drop it down, whatever it needs to be, and then put it back up. I had to make the chop saw level. I was thinking before, oh, it can just kind of angle up, but that didn't work because when you put long material on it, if it's going up or down, it's low or high on this side. It doesn't sit flush, so you can't do it. So I had to level the chop saw. So I got the chop saw level. I got this thing pretty much leveled and kind of tacked in place. So this brace I put on, the angle's not right. I cut them at 45s, but that has to be a lot longer than to be 45. And again, I don't want it to go too low because I want to be able to stack stuff underneath this. So I think I'm going to go at that same length, but I think I'm just going to change. I may not even put an angle on the top. I'll just leave the top square and just bang it up into that um, 90 there. And then the angle down there, I think, just needs to be a little bit more. So I got this one done. It's looking pretty good. It might swell a little bit in the middle there or that might also be the board but what I was looking at here is I was looking at I don't think I'm caring so much about if that's level because what I need is I need when I put a full piece on for it to run all the way out so I think I'm going to pick this up until it touches the bottom of that board and that's what I'm going to go with not even level just making sure that when i have a full piece on it lays flat all the way across i got my film guy pop up out here to help me out um so i think it's built i got braces everywhere i need i got screws in it i think i guess there's only one way to test it 
And we'll do that Jay's way. You want me to get up on there? I weigh about a deuce. No, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> uh, I need to do something about this situation. I got all my batteries I'm on my chargers, but they haven't been charging because I haven't, I moved them from where they used to be. So I think I'm going to put them here. I'm going to hang them on the wall. I got this outlet that I put in that is good for the chargers. Um, so that's got the 12 2 running right to it. So that should be good. And also, our friends over at Crafted Workshop, I should say our cra our friend, <laughs> one guy, old Johnny Brook, uh, he came up with these. He's building these with a 3D printer. He's got a whole website called Craft 3D. I'll put a link in the description of that. But he built these cool uh, hangers. So check this out. So you put that on there and then put that on the wall like that and it'll hang all your batteries. He makes different colors. He makes them for... D-Wall, he makes them for Milwaukee. I think he's got some Makita ones. Not sure, 100%. You have to go on the website and check it out. But yeah, these are pretty cool and uh, not super expensive. And they're just nice holders to get your batteries off the ground. So I'm going to put chargers on top and then Johnny's holders underneath. So these will be for charged batteries. And then the ones uh, up top will be charging. All right, tried to clean up as best I could. I missed the... I miss one of the zip ties but uh i think that looks awesome again thank you johnny brook for hooking up the uh crafted 3d hangers there thank you always for dewalt to dewalt for uh taking care of me with my batteries and uh i think we're ready to rock and roll with some more stuff i got this side over here looking so good i might as well just stay over there i got my air compressor here and i'm thinking i can probably keep it under there i don't need to really store anything over there i can maybe even move it over a little bit just drill a hole up through my thing here and then just plug her in right there into uh, the outlet um if anyone's wondering i look these take 1.5 amps per so three that's six amps this is a 20 amp uh outlet and breaker so i think i'm all right there uh, and the other one again the outside is the garage door was just a couple and then the led lights is nothing as well too so um and the air compressor, I won't be having that on all the time. That's just every once in a while. But I also have this. Bob bought me this for Christmas. Oh, let me pull it out. I should have pulled it out beforehand, but... Freaking train. Yo, I'm trying to film. Quiet, I'm trying to film. Smoky Mountain Railroad. Great Smoky Mountains Railroad. Appalachian comes right by our house. It's pretty cool. I got the Cobalt 50-foot retractable reel. I'm not sponsored by Cobalt. They did not send me this tool. Pop up bought me this. But what I'm thinking is this, is I'm thinking I might hang it right there on the wall. That way I can just grab it whoop, and pull it down for when I need it. I don't want it to be underneath and all nasty. And I don't want to put it down there because I want it close to the garage door. So I'm thinking right there would be phenomenal. And hopefully this line runs long enough to go down to my compressor. And then I'll have air at my disposal all the time. All right, and got uh, the cold ball up. Thing's pretty nice, man. You just give it a little pull. Well, that helps if you have two hands, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Just locks in place. Use it for whatever you need. I got 50 feet. Then you just give it a little tug and rolls back up. Now, the hose that came with it wasn't long enough, so I had to use my hose here. But what I think I'm going to do is I think I'll just at some point cut that and redo the end so that it's the right length so i don't have all that excess crap underneath there and i just drilled a hole in the back here a little bit big but i wanted to make sure i could get in there to uh run the cord down in there so looking good my area here is looking awesome i'm stoked you thanks pop up uh, i'm gonna eat some lunch and then i got a big project next big project next I know you guys are on the edge of your seats on what's going to go here, but let's go look at it. It's right outside. It's big. It's in a big box. What is it? What is it? What is it? What? 
It is a Weber dust collection system. Three horsepower. I don't know much about it yet, but it's gonna be freaking balling. So I'm gonna pull this apart and get it set up inside there. And then once I get up there, I'll get out the manual and everything and we'll talk a little bit more about it. But yeah, this thing is gonna be cool. It's gonna go right there in the middle. Bever, sweet. I've done work with them in the past. They're awesome. So let's pull this thing out, get it inside and let's check out and see what we need to do. All right, we got the Dust Collector HDC 150. That's what it looks like. Not now, but I got all the parts here. So I need to put it together. Uh, no big deal. It's got three inputs, which is good. I'm gonna have one go to the table saw, one go to the planer, and one go up and around to the chop saw, which will be fantastic. And one thing I loved about this one is that it runs off a of 110. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an outlet. I'm gonna run an outlet. I got one more spot in my box here. As we can see, I got one more open spot there. So I'm gonna run another line, another 12-2 over here and I'm gonna put an outlet right there for the Vever dust collector. So it doesn't look too bad. It looks like it should go together pretty easy. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw the TL on this bad boy and uh, get her set up. All right, there she is. All right, so first things first, I think we need to finish hooking up our Bever system. It's great that it works there, but it's not doing any good because it's not hooked up to any of the machines. So I got a bunch of parts online. I got some of these. They're called, I think, blast gates. Uh, I got some 4-inch blast gates. I got some 4-inch to 2-inch blast gates. And I got some reducers because my chop saw here, again, Jamie has like a box behind his that catches everything, but I don't know if I have the room there. So I'm just going to hook it up to this, and hopefully that's going to be good enough. Hopefully the two-inch will uh, go around that, and then I'll have a pipe going up and around over to the Bever. And then the Bever is going to go here. Uh, we got our table saw. We've got our Dewalt table saw, and that's, again, another two-inch there. So I got a two-inch one that will reduce, or the two-inch that will go up to a four-inch to the Bever. And then I stole this from Jones. Uh, this we got back in the day when we were working together. I got this planer. Uh, I do have to change the blades out. That's another thing I need to do. But also, this one either goes four or two inch. So I got a four inch for that one. And I'm going to build a table and put that there. So I think that's the first thing is getting all the machines hooked up to where I can actually use the Bever system, the uh, dust collection system, and uh, see if it works. So let's get at that first. Okay, so my first attempt at this was a failure because this doesn't really go on there great. And then when this picks up, it hits right here. So that's not gonna work. So I think I need to do something with like Jamie did. I think I need to put some type of box on the wall right there, but it has to be big because what happens is when you do this, and you turn it, it's gotta be able to catch there too. Alrighty, it's getting crazy in here now. <laughs> I found this thing, which I think might work. I could probably put it on the back here like that. It doesn't look the greatest, but you know what? I don't know. I put it on there and then I already have, I bought a wall mounted four inch to two inch. So I was thinking that if I took one of these two inch reducers and just zip tape that in there and then just cut a hole in the top of this and zip tape that in there, and then put down the wall, it might work. I wish I could say that it worked, but it does not. The two inch is not big enough to get enough suction for the dust. So I'm gonna have to go back and make it a true four inch hole in that red thing to get true suction. Got the table saw set up. Um, this is not 
best case scenario with it on the ground, but I didn't want to make anything permanent or structural here because again, this table saw, I like the fact that I can take it if I need to. Unlike Jamie's where his shop is just a shop, I may need to bring this out maybe to the house or take it on a job somewhere or take it somewhere. So I like the fact that I can move it. So I'll simply just unhook it and I can just roll the hose up on there. So uh, let's shoot this, uh, let's get this thing fired up and see if uh, I do need a cord. That's one thing I haven't figured out yet is I haven't figured out how I'm gonna plug this thing in and the um, planer in because I don't have an outlet right here and I don't wanna plug it into the same outlet as the vacuum because of the Vever because I don't want to overload that outlet. So I might try to run something over here and drop it down or something. I haven't quite figured that out. We'll have to get to that, but let's get this thing fired up and see how she sucks. Alrighty, got the D wall. I'll just put it in here tight. I will fire up the Vever. It's a winner winner chicken dinner seems like a good size table i'll see if it's squared up if it's not i will square it up on the table saw with my bever sucker there my dust collector uh and that's all i'm going to use i'm going to use some uh leftover two before that i have i'm going to use this and i bought i did buy what i buy i bought these what's this Lowe's. I bought these. These are two inch casters and they lock. I thought it'd be nice. I could lock it, keep it in place, but if I'm not using it, I could move it around and kind of get it out of the way a little bit. I definitely want it on wheels and I think I'll probably put a shelf in it as well. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use some crap, I mean, material I have and I'm going to build this a nice table to outfeed for my table saw. I got my base done, um, and like I said, I'm just gonna use some two two by fours in here as like a four by four, because I don't have any four by fours, but I wanna make sure it's stout. Okay, so now the height, that thing averages somewhere around 36 and a quarter. It's a little bit higher in some spots, but I don't wanna go higher than that table. I'd rather it be a little bit down, because I don't wanna have to hit the table every time. So 36 and a quarter is what I'm gonna shoot for. So now I need to take into consideration the width of my material, and the height of my legs or my wheels when I'm making my legs. So the wheels measure like two and a half, two and a half. And this material is three quarters. So a lot of times what I'll do now, this one's not bad because two and a half and three quarters is three and a quarter. So three and a quarter minus 36 and a quarter is 33. But what sometimes what I like to do is I like to just double check myself. So I'll pull out here 36 and a quarter and I'll make a mark. And then I'll take my tape and I'll just go out and I'll minus one, two and a half, which is there. And then I'll minus three quarters, which is there. And then I'll pull my number and just to play it safe, I'm at 33. So 33 inches is gonna be the length of my two by four. So I need to cut four, two, four, six, eight of them at 33. One of these things doesn't look like the other. <laughs> I call that the inch monster. Uh, inch monstered myself. I cut that one at 32 and not 33. So I need, to, <laughs> I need to cut another one. As you guys can notice too in the time lapse, I am putting some Lexel in there. I know it's overkill, but just a little bead of Lexel in there. And these things are not going to ever separate or come apart. So I got my table going here pretty good. As you can see, when I was screwing in these legs, I was putting my square on there to get them as square as possible. And I have them all in pretty good. And then 
I am going to put a brace in it towards the bottom. And I'm also going to use this as a shelf. I think a shelf would be a good idea to have in there just to store stuff on. Um, and as you can see, I took my numbers from down here. I didn't take my number from up here because these may not be perfect. So I took my number from down here on what this length should be. And that's what I cut it. But I realized as I'm putting them in that if I was to leave this back an inch and a half here and split the D on this one, I could put this next piece on like that and I wouldn't have to tow it in. I could just screw it right in. And I think that will make it a little bit more structurally sound. So I'm going to take these off. I'm going to cut three inches off of these, three and a half inches off of these and split the D here. And that way I can uh, put these on a little bit easier. And then when that's in, I'll cut a, I think I have some scrap or I'll use some, I think I got a piece over there. Uh, I'll use some uh, red board, red board, red board, and uh, make a shelf there. Get the legs on it or the wheels on it and uh, good to go. All right, table's coming along pretty good. I hope she's the right size because it's going to suck if I build this whole thing and it's not the right size. And as you can see, I did put an extra support there in the center just because I needed to use two pieces of, of uh, zip there. So I think that's pretty good though. Okay, so um, my wheels here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to center them up. Just eyeball it is fine. And then you can see I made a couple of little marks there with my marker just to uh, get there. And I'm gonna do a little pre-drill just because I don't want that wood to split because if it splits, then I'm gonna be in big trouble because it's not gonna have tons of weight on it, but it will have some weight on it at some point. So I'm gonna take a real small little drill bit. I don't wanna drill too much out so there's no meat to grab onto. But I think if we just do that, and then I just found some of these on um, the probably sheet metal screws or something. I don't even know. They were in that case of mine over there. So. All right. Now it's time to see if our measurements were correct. So I'm just going to run a piece of scrap uh, zip board across the table saw and see how it planes out with my new table. And voila. We need to make a table for the uh, planer. Tables, tables, tables. All right, let's get this thing out of the way. I can just wheel it right over here. Well, look at that though, it's the same size as that. Well, that's pretty cool, I didn't even realize that. Hmm, gorgeous. Next, I was gonna build a permanent table for the planer. Um, I was gonna put it on one of the Dewalt tables, but I wanted to use those uh, in the shop and not have it taken up all the time with the planer. Um, I ran out of two by four material, so I used just two by six uh, for the frame of this table. I figured it'd just be a little bit more beefier and it wouldn't hurt anybody. So I used two by six instead of two by four uh, to build this table. Hey, Pantsy. That's Charlie Pants. Hi, Charlie Pants. Um, all right, here's the, the base, I guess, for our uh, planer table. Uh, as you can see, I was making some little modifications and we haven't had a pro tip in a while. So I'm gonna give you a little pro tip here. All right, so I have to take just a little bit off of this. So you can try to maybe, you know, move it around and get it perfect like that to hit it. Or what you can do is that on these chop saws, is I put the blade all the way down. And this is a trip. This is a trick I learned from Jamie. And I'm going to put pressure up on my wood up against the blade. And what that's going to do is that's going to bend the blade just a little bit, so that when I pull it up, it goes. It kind of goes back over the wood, so that when I go down, it's just the ever so slightly little nip of the wood. So again, I'm just gonna take this, put some pressure, pull it up, 
Slightest little pressure. Perfect. Pro tip. Next pro tip is now I'm building this table for this. Now I want this to be the same height as this out table. Again, just because it would be nice if it was all the same height. So again, 36 and a quarter. But as you can see down here, I need to be the difference of this, which is two and three quarters. So two and three quarters is the height of this off of the table, which will be the table. Two and three quarters. Okay, so I need to take 36 again. No, 36 and a quarter minus three quarters, my plywood, minus two and three quarters. Alrighty, well I got that table built. She looks pretty sturdy. I don't think she's going anywhere. It's not super level and that's just because I think the concrete is like that. Well, maybe it'll just settle down and, and be flat, but let's see how she planes out with the uh, table. Okay, she's just a touchy, 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 touchy low, but I think that's perfect. I don't think on this surface you could get any better than that. I think that is balling. So I got out table there, out table there. Okay, let's hook this thing up to the, uh, I gotta get this thing hooked up to the Bever. So as you can see, the shop is not show ready. Uh, we'll call it not show ready. And I want to be show ready for the end of this video. I want to be able to come in here and have it look spotless. So I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to clean up a little bit more, get a little bit more organized with some things, and then it will be done. And then fire time. Alrighty, that's a wrap. She's done. Awesome. Is it perfect? I don't think so, but I think it's fantastic. I'm super stoked with the way it turned out. Got a couple tweaking, some fine tuning things I need to do, but um, it's organized, it's clean, it's efficient, and I love it. And with that being said, I do want to thank the awesome companies that support my channel and keep this channel moving forward. Dewalt, again, couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much for all the awesome tools uh, that you uh, supply me with. Uh, Hyperlite, again, Hyperlite, your lights are fantastic. We love them. And uh, thank you so much for supplying those lights. If ever, uh, thanks for the hookup on the three horsepower dust collection system. Uh, that thing's fantastic and works great. Uh, Johnny Brook, again, thanks to Craft 3D on the 3D uh, Dewalt battery holders. They're fantastic. And make sure you check out the description. I'll have links to all these uh, awesome companies and products and uh, a lot of discount codes for you guys as well. So again, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I guess it's time to burn something.